us. We are thrilled to um, to hear everything that you have to share with us. Thank you so much. Brilliant. And uh, thanks so much for having me. I hope you can hear me well and I can see lots of friendly, uh, familiar faces and a big hello to uh, everyone who I've not yet met. Um, so I will just share uh, these slides with you and we'll get going. Great, so I hope you can see that. Um, when I was asked to come along um, this lunchtime to be with you, um, I could reflect on a number of different projects I've been involved in, but this one really jumped out at me as, as sort of something I wanted to share and we can sort of uh, reflect on together. Because for me, the I was involved in this work uh, initially as the independent evaluator of the programme. And then um, a number of years later, I was involved in helping deliver the programme. And it was great to be able to see how some of the original evaluation findings Findings led to modifications in how the how the program was running. And so really, for me, the thread of the story, hopefully I'm going to talk to you about is uh, the importance of kind of research and evidence and how that's inexplicable um, linked intricately to um, evidence and practice. And so the new belongings program was all around improving services for care leavers with care leavers. So I'll take you through um, this story and um, yeah, looking forward to sharing. You, you are muted, Claire. Thank you, Vanya. I noticed just as I moved my slide on, it, it knocked that one. So let me know if at any point you can't hear me. So, yes, it was about 10 years ago that this programme started, New Belongings, and it was originally funded by government, by the Department for Education, and it was facilitated by an organisation called the Care Leavers Foundation. And in the first couple of phases, it worked with 23 local authorities in England. Um, as I said, myself and Joe Dick Dixon did the independent evaluation and the, the work really led to some important national policy changes for care leavers. So these were things that were trialled at the local level and then began to be rolled out. So we can see the kind of origins of things like um, support up to 25 and um, council tax um, exemptions. So the programme came to an end and it, it then got some new funding, um, this time trust funding. So the Esme Fairburn and Segelman Trusts uh, funded the new belongings. So this was the third phase. And this time the programme was run by the children's rights charity, Quorum Voice. And at that point, the programme shifted a little bit in how it looked. It was extended. So rather than being a one year programme, it became three years and it worked with a smaller number of local authorities. Uh, that came to an end. And really, um, the programme is now uh, moving on to be a kind of commissioned programme if uh, local authorities want to purchase and um, uh, get involved in the programme. So we'll just move us on. And so the original programme, as I said, uh, ran for 12 months. And what was the aims? So it was all around tuning into what care leavers say matters. So how can we utilise the experience and the wisdom of our care experienced young people? And how can we use that to help inform the decisions about how services are run and developed? And it was really the second aim around engaging all of the services and partners in providing uh, support to care leavers. So a recognition that you cannot run leaving care services on your own. You need that whole might of the council and actually the might of the local community as well. So could this programme share learning in, in what worked around that, um, getting the local community uh, involved? So the original model had various elements. So it started off very much around evidence. So there was a survey and a review of the role of the personal advisor. 
there was a, a, a requirement to establish a care leaver forum. And then following on from this, the idea was um, each local authority developed their own local multi agency plan. And that plan was around what improvements should be made based on the evidence um, that's been seen in the uh, activity you've done before through the survey. And can you get the strategic commitment and the influence of the political leaders involved? I think I'd want to reflect that none of these components are particularly new, but I think what New Belongings tried to do was put those different components into a model and really try to shine a light on the experience of care leavers and sort of look to um, galvanise some sort of focused um, action, really. So that original uh, New Belongings model, as I said, was evaluated by myself and Joe Dixon. Um, our evaluation um, aimed to describe what it was all about, understand more about what was needed to have a successful New Belongings approach, and then explore, well, actually, uh, on balance, did it make a difference? Was there any evidence of impact? And so the new New Belongings programme, so this was the third phase, um, moved on um, the model, retaining some core elements. And so I'll just take you through the building blocks. So it was really clear um, from the evaluation um, that senior commitment, strategic commitment was an important facilitator. And so the new version of New Belongings made that um, expectation um, crystal clear from the beginning so that Expression, expression of interest that local authorities had to put in in order to be part of the programme, they had to show their commitment, they had to send a letter from the lead councillor uh, from the Depart uh, director of children's services. So that was a uh, setting out the stall from the beginning. Again, the, the programme maintained that baseline evidence. So all the local authorities had to complete a self-assessment, um, how they rated how they were currently doing in relation to delivering support to care leavers. And then all the local authorities had to take part in the Bright Spots, Your Life Beyond Care survey. Um, and that was really to try to understand what young people say matters. And so with that baseline evidence, again, there was a period of action planning. And the core running through that was young people, care leavers, choosing if they wanted to get involved in choosing the priorities, thinking of the solutions. Um, of course, there was time to actually get on and do some of this work to implement the plans. And then towards the end of the programme, there was a kind of follow up evidence review where the survey was repeated and a shorter version of the self assessment. And you can see running across the bottom here, um, those strands of senior management, care leaver engagement and then peer learning. So getting the different authorities together to share was really important because some of the issues coming up in North Tyneside, for example, were echoed in Stockport, in Hertfordshire. So it was really um, a, a welcome part of the programme to share learning and um, frustrations and solutions as well. So young people were really important in this programme, and I really like this uh, diagram that they came up with because um, the words really jump out when young people were asked to describe what being involved was meant, meant to them. You know, it's about empowerment. It's about action. The programme was backed up by research. It was a checker on local authorities. So looking at this kind of three different versions of this programme, um, the different evaluations, what, what kind of helped make New Belonging successful? And the sort of five cornerstones um, were co-production, that senior leadership commitment, making sure that teams, individuals were freed up to work on this, busy teams get less done. So were there resources uh, in place to um, facilitate the work, um, spending time alongside young people, listening properly, responding properly, takes time uh, and commitment and resource. As we said, that partnership working, you absolutely can't do this on your own and the peer learning. And again, as I said, the work was really underscored by those two tools, which was the survey and the self-assessment. 
So again, you can see here that young people's participation was um, embedded from the beginning. It was an expectation in the expression of interest. Young people were supposed to be involved in deciding what the priorities for the action plan were to work alongside the authorities uh, on what the content of those plans were. Um, the feedback loop was really important, keeping not just those young people who chose to get involved, but the whole group of young people across the local authority updated on progress. You said we did together those kind of briefings, feedback loop, and then young people getting involved in reviewing the work and scrutinising um, what was happening. And um, theoretically, um, the uh, youth participant youth participation element was um, informed by the Lundy model um, that talks to us about making sure young people are given the space to have a say and that, that they're given the information and support to express their views. That's the voice element that professionals, including senior managers, um, get together and actually listen to what they um, uh, what they've got to say. So creating those opportunities for audience. And I think a feature in New Belongings was the range of audiences. So speaking to directors of housing, using the corporate parenting panel. Um, so making sure that the actions didn't just sit within um, leaving care teams or children in care teams. And then of course the influence dimension. So making sure uh, young people were involved in that. So you can see here some of the examples of the commitment from uh, senior leadership. Um, I think some of the things that helped was making sure the action plans were signed off at a sufficient, uh, sufficiently senior uh, point. So there was good governance uh, in place that these weren't uh, plans that sort of uh, disappeared, but they, they came back to corporate panic corporate parenting panel on a regular uh, basis. And again, just speaking to the point about the partners, when we looked and um, analysed some of the action plans that were created across the eight local authorities, you can see that whole range of key partners who needed to be involved. So libraries, voluntary sector organisations, health colleagues um, and partners were built in, um, making sure they were at the launch meeting. It was really important that were key contributor to the self-assessment. So they were actually invited to rate how they felt that they were doing, what they contributed to supporting care leavers, um, part of the governance arrangements, and also, uh, of course, the celebration as well and the dissemination events. So you can just see um, some of the uh, pictures from the programme. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time going through the tools that were used, because for me, this is the thread, really, that kind of uh, focus on evidence and making sure that in those action plans, we didn't just see um, things that professionals thought were a good idea um, or that they met uh, professionals needs, um, that they that you could uh, loop things back to the kind of evidence base that had started uh, the programme. And one of the key tools used in phase three was the Your Life uh, Beyond Care survey. Uh, many of you, uh, of course, uh, know this work. It's part of the Bright Spots programme, which is a partnership with the Reef Centre, uh, Oxford and Quorum Voice. Um, and that survey really um, tries to think about what matters uh, to young people. And you can see, um, as I said, um, the survey was done with local young people in those eight areas towards the start of the New Belongings programme and towards the end. And the response rate for a survey was, was very good, I think. Um, it was 50% in the uh, time one and just under 50%, 45%. So um, in some local authorities, um, response rates were up to around 80% uh, as well. So it gave us a really strong evidence base from what to work um, on. However, what I would always say in relation to the Bright Spots survey is 
it needs to be only one part of how you listen and respond to care leavers and, and children in care. So there's lots of other opportunities and ways uh, to listen. And then the other tool that was very much uh, central to new belongings was the Leaving Care Service self-assessment tool. So this was something that Joe Dixon and I had created in the evaluation back in 2016. When we were commissioned by the Department for Education to do that evaluation, one of the things they wanted us to do was to check whether there was progress in the local authorities um, against standards for leaving care. Uh, we, we pointed out to the department that there wasn't any uh, standards for leaving care unless um, unlike the standards we see in children's homes and fostering. And so in the end, we ended up um, writing uh, the self-assessment tool, which is based on uh, things such as Ofsted criteria, um, the Department for Education, Volume 2 and Volume 3 care planning and transitions guidance and uh, research um, findings. So the self-assessment is a way for local authorities to rate how they're doing in line with what a gold standard service might look like. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, about that self-assessment in a moment. So hold on to those two tools and I'll just share a little bit more about the Your Life Beyond Care survey. Um, as I said, it's co-produced and based on what young people say matters. Um, as a programme, uh, there's been over 27,000 voices collected um, and worked in 80 local authorities across uh, the UK. So a really well recognised and validated uh, tool. And it's all about subjective uh, well-being, feeling good and doing well at an individual and interplace personal uh, level. So um, really the programme wanted to understand um, did children, did young people, young adults, care leavers feel they were doing well, feel they were uh, thriving? So I'm just going to show this uh, video. Uh, so I will just share that. And I hope you can see it's really short. And this video really speaks to what the survey, the Your Life Beyond Care, is trying to um, get at really. So I will just put the right one on. Here we go. Um, what makes life good for me is that I thought this team I surround myself with because I feel like in life a lot of what you do is on you but at the same time it's on you to get help from other people and I feel like having that help Make you feel a part of the world rather than alone, and then I think that's what makes it a blur. For me, family is my thing. Whether that be family that you're related to, or family that are just friends, where you can have a good time with that. So, uh, what makes life good for me is having an opportunity to help anyone, no matter what their scenario. I just I love helping people. So, what makes life good in my life is money. Then shop them. Clothes, probably. Great. So we will just stop sharing and go back to the slide. So I, I really hope that everyone could hear that okay. And great. Fantastic. So we'll just whiz back to where we are. Were. Great. Okay. So. Okay, fantastic. So I hope what you got from the video and uh, young people much more eloquently reporting on this, that whole range of things that make life good. And that's why it was really important um, that the evidence base for those action plans, for the changes local authorities were going to uh, make uh, came from young people and the tool as I said that we used was the Your Life Beyond Care survey because it does speak to things that really matter such as friends, pets, trust, 
access to the internet. And I think it's fair to say that local authorities sometimes can be challenged by some of these aspects. Um, perhaps um, they don't always think they sit within their remit, but really, I guess we have to ask ourselves what the purpose of what we're doing uh, is when we're supporting our care leavers as they grow older. Um, and really, it, it, it's surely about having a good life, uh, whatever that means uh, to them. And so each local authority, it was really important that they got some local findings based on how their care leavers felt they were doing and that they did their own local self-assessment. And to help um, everybody hear about those findings, we did things like video summaries of the local findings uh, for each area. Um, there was an evaluation of the third phase and um, I've put some links in there because you can actually look at some of the findings from the the two um, time time points that the survey uh, was done if you're interested and you want to go into a little bit more detail about what each local authority found out. So then we've got this leaving care uh, service assessment um, as I said, it's about a chance for local authorities to collectively with their partners honestly appraise how they think they're doing, what's our strengths and what's our areas uh, for development. Um, and the information was supposed to kind of inform the action planning alongside those uh, young people survey uh, results. And somebody here saying it, it really made you think about where you are now and it highlighted areas that needed more focus. And we could share it with our partners for that joint ownership and what we needed to work on together. So it's uh, around gold standard areas and there's 10 areas. So each of these 10 areas has a number of statements underneath it. And the idea is um, a local authority would rate how they're doing. So some of the areas are, how are you doing in, in in respect of being responsive to how care leavers, uh, their views, how are you doing in, in terms of rights and entitlement, in terms of education, uh, health, work, safe and settled accommodation. And um, there's actually 106 different statements uh, across those 10 areas. So it's quite a big undertaking for a local authority to uh, do the self-assessment uh, process. Um, at time two, we did an abbreviated version um, and um, we actually in phase three developed a young, young people version of the self-assessment so we could compare the sort of rating and ranking uh, that young people were giving them the local authority alongside how the local authority was scoring themselves. So that data really drove things, for example, with housing. There were things being thought about, but it really helped push things over the line because the evidence was there for what we were doing rather than, oh, it seems a good idea. And the survey really helped. That was one of the key things. We got a really good response rate in the first survey um, of care leavers responding. And so responding to that, it's, it's harder to argue when several of your care leavers, several hundred of your care leavers are saying, oh, we need support with this. So that kind of collective evidence base uh, really uh, ran through. Um, and I guess that was one of the kind of threads of what I wanted to talk to you about, that kind of importance um, in, in some practice and change projects of um, the role of research and evidence in supporting that work. So how did new belongings help local authorities to actually make some changes? So we'll just have a look together at some of this. Um, so there was a requirement to produce a new belongings action plan um, and some of the kind of guidance that was given to local authorities, you can see here, of course, base it on what you've heard. Uh, how you've ranked yourself, um, get young people involved, make sure your milestones are measurable and the outcomes uh, are designed and developed with young people. And then we talked about that. Make sure you've got scrutiny and accountability. And then the thing at the bottom, I think, is really important. Um, it's quite a strength uh, based project as well. So 
all of the local authorities, their young people reflected back areas of positive practice where they lots of young people felt, felt things were going well. And so we really encouraged uh, local authorities to put an area, a positive area in their action plans as something they could build on and strengthen. And many of the local authorities cho chose um, personal advisor support. Um, so uh, young people had uh, written uh, about the value of their personal advisor support. So we saw action plans starting to say, well, how can we uh, free up more personal advisor time? How how can we um, even further improve trust? You know, um, so there was practical things like um, making uh, payments easier. So when PAs and young people are out and about having a coffee, a celebratory meal, rather than the quite long process of putting expenses in and different things, you know, could uh, PAs have um, credit cards, different things. Uh, so there was lots of different things. Can we free up time to get out walking, you know, go up a hill together, uh, do do some fun things together. So um, we'll just move on. So, yep, lots of the really exciting stuff was actually getting to local authorities to spend time with their young people, uh, working on action planning, scrutinising the plans towards the start of the project lots of this was online and then it was great to get out and about have barbecues have pizza evenings and uh, look at the action plans and uh, revise them in the main reports you can look at some of the analysis so we had an awful lot of data from those local authorities there was many actions uh, so we could thematically look at what are the what other things local authorities are focusing on such as areas like improving accommodation, improving education and employment opportunities. I'm going to show you next uh, some work that happened in Stockport. Um, so I'll just take you through this example from Stockport and then I'll show you a, a, a short clip again of a, a young person talking about the impact of this. Um, so Stockport had been involved in new belongings since uh, the beginning, 2013, and they were involved in the, the final phase as well. And they'd had an, a, a really great response rate from their um, care leavers. Um, they'd undertaken the self-assessment. They'd found it a good opportunity to come together. Uh, and they were they had they felt they had a good framework in place in terms of uh, awareness with the chief executive and uh, councillors. So they were really struck by the finding that just over a third of their care leavers reported that did, they didn't always feel safe in their home. Now, this figure was very different to the figures they report to the Department for Education on suitable accommodation. And I think it really speaks to the point about who we ask. Um, often it is the professionals who are doing the Department for Education uh, return. So the local authority did a deep dive project, um, speaking with young people. And young people really uh, wanted uh, a quick solution they wanted to be listened to and they came up with the idea that they would pilot having the the camera doorbells the kind of ring doorbells um, because they thought it would help them feel safe they would know who was knocking at their door um, and I think one of the positives is the local authority listened and responded quite quickly and said, you know what, we'll give this a try. So they piloted it with eight young people. It didn't cost very much money. Um, and one of the things that happened as a result is there was a kind of ripple effect uh, from this uh, because the housing director um, was aware that this was happening and that prompted obviously questions about why are we placing why are young people our young people living in areas where they don't feel safe and um, of course over quite a lot of time um, you know 
different uh, parts of the local authority came together to work on a bid and they actually were successful in the rollout of staying close and they they've got some investment around some capital investment to um, grow some further accommodation options and they'll be shaped by young people um, and I think it's a really nice example of what was quite a small idea having that sort of focus on how care leavers are feeling so again I'm just going to share with you a little clip of one of uh, the young people who took part um, telling you a bit about what it meant to them so I'll find it for us. Great, so it's a longer case study, but we're just going to join at this point. Have made such positive differences in each of them and it's our reflection. Just go back a tiny minute, there we go. Um, they have made such positive differences in each of them and it's our reflect. Managed to tie that theme. Um, Circumstances surrounding the online that we live in, um, situations that have gone on, um, such as neighbours, issues with neighbours, just not being safe, like you open the door, you don't use the door, you don't have that name. If you're a young lady, you don't want to be, um, or just a young person, you don't necessarily want to be opening the door, not knowing who's out there, especially if you can't look out to see. Whereas with these ring doorbells, you can actually see who's there, you don't even have to have to go to the door, you can actually just go and speak through the ring of ourselves and you can actually have that communication without putting yourself at risk. Um, so this has benefited them so much. They've also been able to um, sort situations out where maybe one of the young people have added domestics um, and they've been able to actually see when that person's been taking their home and get them a rescue car. Obviously, as well, they should have been there in the first place due to the ring of our work and to witness this, record this for future situations. Um, personally, it's just, it, it has lowered my life so much because just being a young person with my own can be quite lonely at times, but especially, you know, the money and the stuff that you're not used to, it. you don't want who's out there, you're paying the little noise and you want to go check for it. This allows you to actually do that and to see peace and this one has been with my own values, so it does help my actual value in my mental health. Um, yeah, that's just really just All right. So I'll just bring us back and we'll just uh, finish where we were. So I think for me, that really brings it uh, to life, really, um, the idea and the impact of uh, being listened to and that being rolled out. Um, so let's just start here two seconds great um and i won't go through this in too much detail but i really love this one as well from again from stockport um they uh were really struck by the fact they hadn't overly reflected on uh, pets and the importance of pets for their young people yet about 50 percent of their young people said we've got a pet and you know they give us companionship, emotional support. We love them. And so the local authority have reached out to a um, voluntary group nearby. You know, what can we do together around this? You know, how can we support our care leavers to continue enjoying their pets, give them advice, access to pet food if they need? Um, and yeah, so I just really love that in a, a corporate presentation. These were the things that um, Stockport were choosing to share and reflect back. So again, really quickly, the New Belongings programme, uh, everybody managed to stay engaged uh, throughout, which I think is uh, good, uh, eight local authorities, and they all reported making uh, positive changes. And some of the points highlighted in the evaluation of the third phase were uh, increased funding for their leaving care service, uh, improved relational practice, uh, extra opportunities, um, that greater focus on particular issues. I think this can't be uh, emphasised enough, just a 
greater understanding of how young people feel they're doing themselves and their views and that making uh, a difference to the service and raising that profile of uh, care leavers across the local authority uh, as well. So I think really if we had to sum up a kind of key message uh, from the programme, um, it's that value of the evidence base of working with young people locally to develop those solutions that they feel will make the most difference to them. Um, and um, I think uh, we were really struck by Professor Laura Lundy. I talked about the Lundy model and I think some local authorities were hesitant at times they didn't feel they were doing full co-production they had small numbers of young people involved uh, and really the ethos we took from some of the work was that just because you can't do it as well as you would like to it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it at all so that idea that we start small uh, we include young people we create multiple opportunities to be involved so we really saw local authorities kind of shifting from um we'll have one group of care leavers they'll meet every two weeks at the same venue to offering a kind of menu of opportunities for young people to get involved maybe on a one-off to get involved on particular issues they felt passionately about so that kind of diversification of um, opportunities to work alongside uh, each other so I feel I've got a couple of minutes just to show one final video from young people, if that's OK. So bear with me while I'm jumping around, but we will just share this final one video from young people. OK, so. Great, so we'll just go and share that one. As part of the final report on new belongings, we asked for the views of young people involved in the project to look at the changes that new belongings has brought to them. What changes has new belongings brought to you? It has helped quite significantly in a lot of mental health support terms in terms of like getting friendships and helping with self-harm while also helping more practically in terms of helping with getting housing and safer housing. The socialising due to the Wi-Fi and the devices, like the laptops, and supporting us with having our mobiles. What changes are you most proud of? I'm happy that changes have been made to improve housing and cost of living and improve safety of feeling safe in your home. I am most proud of feeling safe because of the changes, such as the ring doorbells, like feeling safe in the home. This is benefiting myself and many other care leavers. It has changed my life quite a bit. How has being involved in new belongings helped you? I personally, as well as other care leavers, have been involved in these changes through the Care Leavers Forum. This has helped me meet new people, volunteer my time to support and make these changes for care leavers, as well as myself. This has helped me feel heard and feel positive about the future of care leavers. This has also made me feel like some things can be changed for the better. This is a sense of relief because sometimes in the care system you feel like you're going to get nowhere, you feel trapped and lost and forever lonely. But this has, all these changes that have come into place through the new belongings have carried on to benefit many others. And I would like to carry on seeing these changes progress and stay in place in the future. So I'm really happy to be a part of this. It was good to be a part of the survey and know the leaving care team are trying to improve things for all care leavers. It's good to have my say. It's given me an insight into the workings of what happens behind the scenes. And that for me is quite massive. It shows me that there is something is happening, even if I don't see the end result of it personally. And then also being heard and having my opinion taken into account has been massive. Great. So we are nearly there. So one quick change back to the slides and then um, great. So. Joining you today 
made me really reflect on that kind of journey or story and how that original ev evaluation that had been involved in a number of years ago, how the learning from that we could kind of see had had influenced some of the, the programme adaptation. And so I think some of the things that happened was the learning, it, it takes time. So the, the new version was extended to three years. Um, it's intensive, so the number of local authorities taking part was reduced, but the, the kind of cluster element, like getting different local authorities together to share that peer learning, that element was retained. The self-assessment tool that had been created just for the evaluation became a kind of core tool in the, in the new programme, and it was important there was a version for young people developed. Um, the the survey that was used in the last stage um, changed completely. The findings in the original evaluation was uh, local authorities had very low response rates, 3%, 7%, that they felt very uh, lost with the analysis, um, that they um, they didn't make the best use. So they had asked care leavers what they were doing, but then felt um, less supported. And so shifting how that survey was administered in the later, that it was validated, that it was co-produced, that the analysis was done by the programme, not the LA, I think helped with the response rate, better feedback loop, notwithstanding it's still an awful lot of work. Um, they kind of dropped the review of the PA in that recognition that actually it takes the whole council, lots of different teams. And I just talked about that menu of opportunities. So originally they had been more of a requirement to have a group, keep the group, same group of young people. And I think really the learning was about shifting more to kind of local organic solutions. So previous phases had had uh, national young people go and visit local authorities and there was maybe less emphasis on local young people so I think it's a balance between the two and making sure those changes can in theory be sustainable and again continuing to build in those expectations around strategic commitment. There's loads of tools and resources in this uh, resource hub so that we've written up lots of practice examples like the ring doorbell, like the pets, so they're all in there. And so I'm just going to finish now and say thank you very much uh, for listening.